So I seem to be having problems with my connection here. I hope you guys can see me. Seems to be going on and off. Okay, Jesus. Great. Thanks for that feedback. I appreciate it. I'm not getting very good feedback on my own reports here. It's showing a poor connection. But I'm grateful that you can see and hear me. So I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes just to let people join in. Give it another 30 seconds or so. So, I guess we should start. Good evening, everybody. I'm Natalie Hansen from the River Vineyard in Edo, coming to you live from our citrus farm. So, life is messy and unpredictable, right? I was scheduled to share at Fountain Vineyard this evening in a live session. And then Corona intervened again. Well, to that we say, thank you, Jesus, that you are in control. And I want to just pray that you would have your way with each one of us, wherever we are this evening, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us through your word in Jesus' name. So for this session on Facebook tonight, the Lord has actually given me a completely different message that relates more directly, I think, to the situation that we find ourselves in and the challenges that we face. Since the beginning of lockdown, I've had the sense that the Lord is using this time to prepare us as a church, but most especially as individuals for the revival that is imminent. We've heard recently from Robert and Tooley about the need for us to redefine our notion of church and to discover our common humanity. We've heard from our leaders around the globe about being scattered servants, ready to serve God in new ways, displaying new courage and passion for the kingdom. And we all know that to have a firm grasp, we need to have a firm grasp of who God is and what he's done for us if we're going to begin to reach others with the life and hope that God has for each of us. We need to worship him as the one who truly brings light in the darkness. So tonight, I want to speak about how we connect with God as individuals. I want to zoom in, if you'll excuse the analogy, on our personal relationship with him. And to ask the question, how personal is our relationship with God, actually? 
You may well have heard about the book by Dr. Brene Brown. And I've got a copy here I'm going to show it to you. It's called Daring Greatly. I know that Dave promotes this concept of vulnerability that she highlights. The importance of being real and transparent with ourselves, with God and with others. The questions we need to ask ourselves in this season of challenges are, am I my authentic self? Am I in touch with the truth of the internal struggles and emotions that are going on inside of me? Am I okay about being not okay? Am I being honest with myself and with God? So let me give you some examples of statements that I hear people saying about themselves in these days. So it might be, I feel like I've got this heavy cloud over me all the time. Or I can't help feeling anxious about my finances. Or the government is making some ridiculous decisions. They're making things so much worse. And what about all the crime? Or else, I'm so over this. I just want to connect with my mates again and go away, have a break. Or some say, I really want to go overseas and see my kids. And then lastly, what's going to happen to our kids and their education? How can we not be concerned about that? So let's unpack some of these thoughts and words. What are the emotions underlying them? Many of us are expressing our sense of despair, our fear of the future, our anger towards the government, our frustration of being restricted, and our worry about our security. Despair, fear, anger, frustration, worry, these emotions are real. As Christians, we face internal battles of maybe thinking that we should be more mature. Why are we allowing the circumstances to get us down? We should trust God more. Maybe our faith is not as strong as we thought. So how do we reconcile what we are feeling with God's truth? And how do we get out of these negative patterns of thinking? I want to offer a practical suggestion and give a few examples. But before I go there, there are two scriptures that come to mind. So the first is from 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. And it reads, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And then one of my favorites from Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So what this means is that we become aware of the words that we are speaking over ourselves. We acknowledge the power that is in these words, and then we repent of them, and we replace them with the powerful truth of God's word. Proverbs 18.21 says, The power of life and death are in the tongue. So the essence of what I want to bring to you this evening is the power of prophetic declaration of God's word over ourselves and our circumstances. So I'm going to give you four practical examples. So let's say the first negative statement. I feel like God has abandoned me. And now we replace that with an antidote from God's truth in Hebrews 13.5. God will never leave or forsake me. And so we pray, thank you, Father, 
that you are with me in the midst of this situation. Thank you that you see me and you love me and you know what's best for me. And so I choose to trust you, Lord, and I thank you for my many blessings. And then the second negative might be, I feel so down all the time. Replace it with God's truth from Isaiah 60, 61 verse 3. Jesus came to provide for those who grieve in Zion, who grieve in Port Elizabeth, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of despair. We want to thank you, Lord, that your joy transcends our circumstances. Thank you that you give us the capacity to worship you regardless of how we feel, because you are a good and faithful Father. And so, Lord, we receive your joy in Jesus' name. So another negative may be, I just don't think we're going to manage financially. Replace it with God's truth from Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done for you. And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, please forgive us for doubting your provision and for trying to fix things in our own strength. Thank you, Lord that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You provide all our needs and you're more than enough. So the fourth and last example might be, I'm struggling to sleep and to be honest, I'm fearful. We could be the next victims of this terrible crime. Replace it with God's truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And so we repent of our fear, Father, and we thank you that you are our shepherd. You watch over us and your name is a strong tower where we can take refuge. Your name is above every other name, above the name of fear or shame or loneliness. Thank you, Father, that we can rest in the knowledge that Jehovah Shalom is our king. And so we can see that God's word is an immensely powerful tool in our spiritual arsenal. As we speak God's word over ourselves, we release God's power from the heavenlies that produces change. But we need to exercise our faith as we do this, keeping our hearts focused that it's all about God, his mercy, his kindness, his love, his provision. We keep on praying and declaring his word until we find release. So if this concept is not convincing enough for you, I want to offer scientific validation for the power of prophetic declaration. Dr. Caroline Leaf has written a book, and I've got it here to show you. It's called Switch on Your Brain. So Dr. Leaf studied cognitive neuroscience for 20 years. Basically, it's how our thoughts and our self-talk impact our health and our happiness. Our brains are neuroplastic. They change and grow. When we rewire our thoughts, we are literally changing the programming and chemistry in our brains. The chemical flow in the brain switches on genes in a positive or a negative direction based on our choices. So as it says in Deuteronomy 30 verses 19, I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. 
our thoughts and our emotions are transformed into physiological realities. Dr. Leaf says, science has finally caught up with the Bible. Hallelujah. We are literally physiologically transformed by the renewing of our minds. So she tested this out over 20 years with people who had mental, psychological and physical disabilities where doctors had said, you'll never walk again. And she proved that over time and a process of rewiring their brains with positive statements, with visualizations of their dreams or goal, and with prayerful participation with the Holy Spirit, with a sense of conviction that we can pretty much overcome anything. Whatever we believe or hope for becomes substance on a neurological level, and then we act on it. So we can switch on happiness, good health, hope, and peace. Or we can switch on anxiety, stress, and negativity. When we take captive our bad choices and toxic thoughts, and we replace them with spirit-led scriptures from God's word, we transform even the most painful memories, so that over time, the trauma attached to them is negated. And as it says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, the old has gone, the new is come. Dr. Leaf emphasizes whatever we think about the most will grow. So let's be mindful on what's on our minds. Dr. Leaf makes a compelling case in her technical illustrations of neurotransmitters and how the brain operates. We have every reason to believe in the power of prophetic declaration of God's heavenly word. And I, in, I quote from her, the process of thinking and choosing is the most powerful thing after God. So today, Paul and I were watching the documentary on TV earlier called Chasing the Sun. It's about the psychology and the ethos behind the Springboks win in the Rugby World Cup final. And in it, their defense coach spoke about what he called a superior discontent. So it's about the determination to not allow the English players into their territory. The game was won on much more than physicality. It was won on their mentality, their urgency, their hearts, their conviction. And so let's us assume the same passion in our spiritual journeys. Let's determine, I will not allow the enemy, this situation, this person, this emotion, to rob me of my peace and joy. I have the victory in Christ Jesus. And so if we speak God's hope his goodness and his provision over us, then that's what we can expect to reap. We may not yet feel upbeat, but we declare prophetically, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As he thinks in his heart, then so is he. And in John 6.63, Jesus told us that the words he speaks to us are spirit and they are life. And so coming towards a conclusion, friends, I want to encourage us to be real about the murmurings of our heart that have been not been good for us. Let's take note that our self-talk is hugely important. And this is not a denial of the fact that we are challenged by difficult circumstances and negative emotions. The point is, as children of God, we do not need to be stuck 
in places of fear or despair. Our joy, our peace and our hope will increase when our thoughts and our words are aligned with God's promises. So let's speak over ourselves what God says, words of blessing that will bear good fruit, not words that reflect a sinful heart or troubled circumstances. Let God's word have the final say about how we feel, about where we're going. And when we speak to God, by all means, let us speak the truth about our vulnerabilities and our weaknesses. And then let us put aside our ways and walk in the truth of who we are in Christ, who God says we are, what his word promises us, and above all, who God is, our almighty, omnipotent God. So let's close in prayer. Father God, I pray for each one listening to this word. And I thank you, Lord, that you are looking, that, that they are looking to you for their answers. And that you provide for each one who's listening. I thank you, Father, that you see them and you know them. You know what they're feeling and you know why. And I pray, Father, that you would prompt each one of us Speak to us your life-giving words that are our truth and give us the strength to seek you with all our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done.